Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to create this multi-segment suspension in Blender. Uh, as you can see over here, the cylinders are actually moving in and out of the main cylinder housing instead of stretching and scaling, like some of the videos that I saw on YouTube. I, I was actually looking for a video to show me how to do this, but I couldn't find any, so uh, not like this anyways. And so I had to figure out how to do this uh, in light of the fact that I was doing another, uh, an animation using those segments, or those suspension segments. Um, and this is the SpaceX Falcon 9 landing leg with that suspension that you saw. And in this uh, animation, I was actually uh, keyframe animating each segment. <laughs> Not a very good idea. It's okay if you don't have to change anything, but in my case, I wanted the legs to open wider. Uh, it's a bit naughty, but... Uh, and w the end result was I had to change... or I had to move points in the... Uh, dope sheet to make sure that everything else falls back into place and nothing flies off into space and whatever. Not a very robust way of rigging the suspension, I thought. So it took me a couple of days to figure out how to do this because uh, I'm a noob and uh, I haven't used Blender for more than one and a half months just yet. So bear with me here. We'll show you how to create it. Let's start with a new file and I'll use screencast key so that I don't have to mention what I'm pressing. Uh, I'll try to save some time here. So let's start with an armature and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise and uh, stretch it to about two major grid width length. The first bone is usually the longest one and then extrude, extrude, extrude and extrude because we have five segments for the landing leg uh, suspension and then before we add the cylinders on top of this uh, armature we have to make sure that the armature is behaving correctly first so let's go to the pose mode select the tipmost or the last bone and add an IK or inverse kinematic constraint when you move the, the, the IK tip then you'll find that the other bones are rotating that's something we don't want so for each bone we want to lock the X, Y, Z rotational uh, values and set the stretch value to something like 1 for now. So let's do that for all the other bones except for the first bone. We don't want the first... we want the first bone to continue rotating uh, like so. Oops. Yeah. This time when you move the IK tip all the other bones are going to stretch to the left or to the right. Now we don't want it to stretch to the right too far, so we're going to add another object, which is the empty. And then we're going to move that empty to the very tip of the armature. And then we're going to select the armature again and go back to that IK tip and set the target to point to the empty. What happens is, every time, everywhere your empty goes, the armature is going to always point to it. Time for the distance setting. So we want to constrain the distance by uh, adding a constraint to the empty, which is limit distance. And the target should be the armature, the first bone of the armature. So it's between here and there, right? So when you move the empty, it's not going to go past that distance. Right. Now it's time to add the cylinder, so let's add the first cylinder. For the first cylinder, you're going to have to move that pivot point from dead center to the rightmost edge. So let's rotate the viewport a bit, edit mode, select that face, put the 3D cursor there, and set the origin to 3D cursor. Then, <clears throat> And then we're going to scale it, but let's go to wireframe view to do this. So scale the cylinder to your liking and move the pivot point and align it to the center of the first node or the pivot point well sorry there okay <laughs> yeah and then we're going to scale the cylinder length to however long we want it to be and we're going to duplicate the cylinder a few times to the right scaling scaling it along the way and leaving a little bit of uh, overlap between cylinders oops did i press the wrong key here yeah so let's do this.
Yeah, so the tipmost cylinder is going to be the thinnest one. Now when you move your empty, nothing's going to happen to the cylinders, obviously, because we need to bind the cylinders to the underlying bone. So to do that, you have to make sure that the sequence of your selection is according to this sequence, which is select the cylinder first, then the bone. Right? And then press Control p and select Bone Relative. It's the same as doing, uh, well, yeah, just follow this way. So let's select the cylinder, then the bone, bone relative. Do the same for all the bones. Like so. And we'll be done in a jiffy. Now, when you move your empty, uh, the armature follows, the bones will scale, and the cylinders will inherit the scale of the bones, which is something we don't want. So for each cylinder, we're going to add a constraint which is limit scale and the scale value that you need to lock is minimum Z and maximum Z now what value you put in there depends on the cylinders Z scale so let's call up the transform panel and look at the scale for Z the value is 0 0.253 and we'll copy it and we will paste it into these two fields here now let's do the same for all the other cylinders there. Yeah, and we're done. Uh, basically, your, the result should be the cylinders will not scale, even if the bones do. Okay. Now, I think there's one last thing we have to do, but let's use shaded view and change the armature look into something a little bit more skinnier, like stick. All right. Now, you will notice that the tipmost cylinder is retracting first, and uh, extending last. So we want the behavior to be opposite of what we have right now. So let's change the bone stretch. So for the first, uh, for the last bone, go to the bone tab and remember that stretch value that you set to one. One means the most stretch, uh, the, the most stretchable. Zero means not stretchable at all. So if you change the bone stretchability to zero and move the, the empty, the bone is not going to stretch, there, therefore the cylinder is not going to uh, retract at all. all right? So we want to change that now to something between 0 and 1. Let's start with 0 0.2. Then the bone next to it will be 0 0.4. So we're going to progress toward 1, uh, to, you know, moving this way. All right? So uh, essentially what's happening is the thickest bone or the, the longest bone is going to be the most stretchable. And then the shortest one is going to be the least stretchable. So the effect that you're going to get is this, whereby the tipmost cylinder is retracting last and extending first, like most suspensions do, I guess. So let's look at this in 3D view and marvel at our work. So, yeah, so you can use this now for, you know, the innards or the internal hydraulic uh, suspensions or uh, that you see in the Terminator 2 or maybe pirate telescopes that fold like this or maybe even motorcycle p uh, suspension. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I hope you like this video and um, thank you for watching.